This video is brought to you by Squarespace. You know, there's just a lot of famous love stories out there. You've got Romeo and Juliet, Cinderella and Prince Charming, and of course in the modern day you have La Marzocco and Spro. But today I want to talk about why my love story with La Marzocco sort of fizzled, faded, and has now more or less come to an end, and why my GS3 has since moved on to its new owner, leaving me for the first time in essentially a decade, basically my entire coffee career, La Marzocolis. And of course, there's reasons for everything, and I'm gonna share these reasons with you right now, but the first thing to get out of the way is it has zero to do with the machine's capabilities, functionality, build quality, materials, absolutely none of that. Instead, it has everything to do with my changing perception of La Marzocco, the endless hamster wheel of content creation, and the somewhat selfish pursuit of wanting to try more and more machines. But it does seem, at least based on some of the comments and the questions and messages I've received since putting the GS3 up for sale on Instagram a couple weeks ago, y'all have questions. Y'all want a thorough explanation for this change. And I think that makes sense. And it's fair to ask because really this channel since the beginning, since I started in 2018, has been more or less sort of a love letter to La Marzocco. In one way or another, a La Marzocco espresso machine has been the backbone of this channel since the very beginning. And it's sort of developed a reputation for me as kind of the La Marzocco guy on YouTube. Plus in my early days of creating YouTube videos and trying to get myself out there and share content, I picked up a Linea Mini partially because I felt like it gave this channel some weight. It gave this channel some credibility and some legitimacy. Now, whether or not that's real or just something I perceived in my mind, I guess is up for debate. But in retrospect, I do think having one machine that I was doing so much on for so much of my coffee career essentially skewed my perception of other manufacturers. And I essentially put La Marzocco up on a pedestal. But over the years, as the channel grew, when I developed more and more connections and was able to finagle more and more machines coming through, it really broadened my experience. And now as I sit here eight years deep of owning at least one La Marzocco through that entire period of time, I can say I feel a little bit disenchanted with La Marzocco at this point. And really through those experiences, through the constant cycle of machines coming through, it's essentially tore down the pedestal that La Marzocco once sat on. I mean, you can basically watch all of this happen essentially in real time on my channel as I tried different machines. And I think it really started to take more of an effect once I tried the Lelite Bianca, which really sort of swayed the, the pendulum, I would say. Um, but I think comparing La Marzocco's to everything from a $500 Gaja to a $7,500 San Remo really did also help change that perception. And honestly, at this point, I think if you've been watching for a while, I don't think anything that I'm saying right now is all that shocking. I feel like if you've watched even my GS3 review that was published almost a year and a half or so ago, um, I said that buying an $8,000 espresso machine isn't a decision made in reason. Instead, it's one made in owning a piece of espresso history, sure. A piece of La Marzocco's legacy, yeah. But of course, some clout. I mean, sure, we all love to look at espresso machines. Espresso machines get a lot of the glory, but I think when we come down to, to picking them out, things like heritage and history and reputation and marketing really goes a long way. It's like everything else. But one thing that I, I believe, and I think a lot of other coffee enthusiasts kind of find out the hard way, and it's not talked about enough, is that espresso machines, of course, they do provide the squeeze, but in the end, it's the grinder that makes the juice. I think that makes sense. But anyway, now that we're on the topic of other machines, I think it's time to segue into the more practical reasons as to why the GS3 and I have parted ways. And one of them is I just don't use it as much as I should or really want to. It's spent a lot of time just in the secondary position. It's spent actually quite a while in my kitchen on the island, really unplugged and doing nothing. And honestly, that sort of feels kind of like 
a shame. You know, I haven't actually featured the Lamar Zoco on the channel since February, and we're now in April. And it's a solid piece of equipment. It truly is a pleasure to use, but with the Decent here, it does all the things I need it to do, especially for a lab studio-based machine. It just makes more sense in terms of consistency, repeatability, and control. The GS3 just started to feel a little redundant. So I figured instead of it being just a glorified $8,000 conversation piece or paperweight on my kitchen island, it could be better utilized as someone's primary machine. And I could then take those additional funds and roll them back into the channel and use it to try something different, something I've never had. And of course, this kind of brings me back to the content angle. And I probably shouldn't even have to say this, but in content creation, everything has a shelf life and espresso machines really are no different. And whether that be a review, a comparison, or an ASMR workflow video, you know, using filming and producing videos using the same machine over and over again begins to feel stale to me. Um, and I don't know, I can imagine it probably starts to be stale for the viewer. And I think at this point, considering this in the grand scheme of a small channel, I want to utilize my limited space, time, and funds to keep things moving and keep things fresh. I mean, of course, I can only speak for myself and my own experiences, but um, I think it's more fun to have just a continuing flow of machines coming in and out. And I think it's pretty unlikely you'll see any machine in the course of the channel moving forward sit for all that long. Though I do think the Decent is a great studio test tinkering machine, as I mentioned earlier, so that one will likely be sticking around for some time, but a secondary machine is what I've got my eyes on. And I would like to have just a completely new espresso experience, right? And I think the type of machine I've been considering now for some time is adding to the bar at least, and one that I have very minimal experience on is a spring lever. Anyway, I'm sure that from a lot of viewers' perspectives, this is kind of a grandiose thing to do, do a full video talking about why I sold an espresso machine. But as I mentioned earlier, I figured I'd get ahead of the questions, get ahead of the messages, lay it all out there and share my perspective. Of course, this is all part of the evolution of my content and this channel. And I know it won't be for everyone, but moving forward, expect to see more videos like this, where we're just having essentially a chat Maybe I'll go on more vlogs and do stuff like this. It sort of feels like a video journal entry. But I also can't help but recognize and address that my position in the coffee industry is extremely unique. And I'm incredibly fortunate to be where I am and to have owned two La Marzocos. But the time has come to broaden my horizons, try new things, try new uh, espresso machines more specifically in the hopes of continuing to foster not only my passion for coffee, but also to help those who are maybe stumbling or searching through their own growth and pursuit of great espresso. And on that bombshell, I think it's time I start wrapping this one up. And as always, pass the conversation, somewhat reluctantly this time, on to you. Because I think that this conversation is a little bit controversial. I mean, I think every time I've done a video, being you know, critical of La Marzocco and mainly the, the wedge that's being driven for me being the price versus what you get for it, you know, the value proposition of La Marzocco is where I'm having my biggest issue. So uh, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on that. Of course, keep your comments respectful, keep them kind to me, your fellow uh, viewers and commenters, and of course, manufacturers. Um, you know, I'll be keeping an eye on that as that progresses. This could get a little spicy. And if you have any recommendations on other spring lever machines I should be taking a look at, of course, drop those down below as well, because that's kind of a brand new horizon for me that I'm going to be embarking on soon. So um, let me know on those. And of course, drop your answers to those questions and any others you may have in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see y'all next week. And don't forget to support this video's sponsor, Squarespace. Using their powerful platform, you can create a beautiful website for your community or business, which allows you to connect with your audience through their comprehensive blogging features, online shop, or even exclusive members-only sections of your website. Squarespace also utilizes a fluid engine website design system, which gives anyone and everyone the ability to lay out and create the website of their dreams with just a simple drag and drop. 
So head on over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Prometheus to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram at Prometheus for content throughout the week. Help support the channel by considering becoming a member for early content access. And as always, stay caffeinated, pony boy.